uh, the same color playing the different. Let's check. Check this is. Test. Check my test. Check my test. Good evening, everyone. If you are seeing this stream, can you please comment? I just want to see if I can see the comments in this video. Hello everyone. Anybody who has time to comment, I am just testing something. Hello everyone. Hello, hello, hello. If you have time to comment, uh, please comment. I just want to test if I can see your comments in this setup testing check my test 23 check my testing hello everyone actually i am preparing to reach whether or not somebody is viewing okay somebody is viewing can you uh, sir or mom can you please type a comment i'm just wondering if i can see the comment while i'm doing my other things in the screen check my testing check my test hello people hello friends can you please type some comment I just, I just want to test, test if I can, can see the, the comment because I'm going to try to do a live with a Q&A so, so people can, can ask comments. Thank you for trying to comment. I'm testing something. Can you, can you type something in the comment if you see hello? <laughs> Hello, Hello, my friend. friend. Can, can you, you type, type something in the, the comment? I just, I just want to see if I can see what, what people are typing in the, the comment. Hello, my test. Good evening, my, my friends. Can, can you type, type something in the comment? I just, just want to be to see, see what's, what's happening. happening. Check, Check my, my testing. testing. I'm just, just testing a broadcast. Can, Can you type, type something, something in the, the comment, please? Do you, do you hear my... Is my audio clear? Is my audio clear? Please type if it is clear in the comment box. Check my test. Can anybody hear me? My echo? Really? Check my echo. My echo, my echo. Wait lang. Maybe... Yan. Hello. Check. 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 Hello. 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 Check. Ito, ito, ito. Check my test. Hindi na may echo masyado. Check. Hello, my test. Check, check. Check. Hello, my testing. Check. Hello, hello. Is this better? Is this better? Check my test. Is the sound better? Check my test. Hello, my test. Is there less echo? Check, check, check.
check hello hello my test check my test two one two three <coughs> excuse me check okay neba check check hello do you understand me clearly Do you understand me clearly? Can you please comment? Is it still echoey? Thank you for commenting. Is it still echoey? Or is my voice okay now? Our topic this evening is about little echoing, really. Okay, let me, maybe I should stop the stream and check. Hello. Meron ngang echo. Okay, I heard myself. I think it's okay. So, uh, good evening, everyone. I am intending to present this. No, I'm just practicing how to present. Okay, let's go this. And then, yeah, okay. How to know the future? A dream from the past speaks to the present. An absent-minded scholar was riding in the train one day, totally absurd in his reading. The conductor walked by and asked for his ticket. The scholar reached... Okay. Uh, check. I'm just testing that one. Thank you, Liam. Thank you, Sherlyn. Okay, okay. Uh, the purpose of this stream is to review for myself the doctrines because I read in Matthew 13 that Jesus said those who don't understand the doctrine will be swept away like those uh, seeds that were planted or that were scattered in the wayside okay before we start i would like to pray okay let's pray our Father in heaven, we ask you to forgive us for our sins. Please uh, guide me as I review your word. If there are listeners and viewers, please guide them also. Forgive us for our sins. Give us wisdom and understanding. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, let's see our slide. How to know the future? A dream from the past speaks to the present. There was this uh, guy who was riding a train one day and then the conductor said, uh, Where is your ticket? Can I check your ticket? Sure. And then the scholar was looking for the ticket. He couldn't find the ticket. And then the conductor said, Never mind, I will check later. But the scholar said, you don't understand. I have to know where I'm going because uh, what is where I'm going is written in the ticket. So like so many people, many people do not know where they are going. They don't know what is the future. They are confused and they wonder where mankind is headed. But we don't know to need, uh, we don't need to wonder any longer. 2600 years ago in ancients an ancient king's dream outlined the history of the world in the bible the book of daniel tells the story of a remarkable dream 
the man who had the dream was at the time the ruler of Babylon, then the most powerful kingdom in the world. In only his second year as a king, Nebuchadnezzar went to bed one night with anxious thoughts on his mind. He, like all of us as times, was worried about the future. He wondered just how long his kingdom would endure. Finally, he drifted to sleep. When the king awoke, he was perplexed. He knew that he had a dream. He had a dream, and he knew that it was very important, but he couldn't remember what the dream was. Now, in ancient Babylon, dreams were believed to be connected with the supernatural world, and Nebuchadnezzar had a whole cabinet of astrologers, sorcerers, magicians, who claimed to be in contact with the spirits. Despite the early hour, these wise men were summoned. Surely they would be able to tell him what the dream was about. Daniel 2.3 says, I have had a dream, and my spirit is anxious to know the dream, he told the wise men. O king, live forever, they were shocked, they said. Tell your servants the dream, and we will give the interpretation, Daniel 2.4. But Nebuchadnezzar was in no mood to make a bargain with the wise men. My decision is firm, he said. If you do not make known the dream to me and its interpretation, you shall be cut in pieces and your house shall be made an ash heap. However, if you tell the dream and its interpretation, you shall receive from me gifts, rewards, and great honor. Therefore, tell me the dream and its interpretation. Finally, Babylon's wise men confessed, there is not a man on earth who can tell the dream the king's matter. Therefore, no king, lord, or ruler has ever asked such things of any magician, astrologer, or Chaldean. There is no one, uh, there is no other who can tell it to the king except the gods whose dwelling is not with flesh. In Babylon at that time, there were Hebrew young men who had been so successful in their studies that they were evidently included among Nebuchadnezzar's wisest of the wise men. For some reason, however, the first time Daniel and his three friends heard of the dream was when the officers came to put them to death. But Daniel knew something the other wise men didn't know. They had told the king that only gods could reveal his dream and that God didn't live the gods didn't live among humans but Daniel and his friends knew that the God of the Bible, the God of heaven, they knew that he lives among and communicates with his people. So Daniel went to Nebuchadnezzar and pleaded for more time before carrying out the execution and the king granted his request. So what a responsibility David Neal had in his shoulders. Not only would he save his friends and his own life, but the lives of all the wise men in Babylon. So returning to their house, the four believers in God prayed for a miracle. And God honored those prayers. That very night, the dream was revealed to Daniel. What an amazing answer to prayer. What an opportunity to introduce the king and the entire kingdom to the true God. Therefore, Daniel went to Ariok, who the king had appointed to destroy the wise men of Babylon. He went and said, thus said to him, Do not destroy the wise men of Babylon. Take me before the king, and I will tell the king the interpretation. Daniel made it clear to Nebuchadnezzar that he could not take credit for interpreting the dream. The secret which the king had demanded the wise men, the astrologers and the magicians and the soothsayers cannot declare to the king. But there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets and he has made known to King Nebuchadnezzar what will be in the last days. Daniel was introducing Nebuchadnezzar to the one true God. He alone knows the future. God told Isaiah about himself in Isaiah 46, 9 and 10. For I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning 
and from the ancient of times things that are not yet done. So Daniel's God had been able to do what all the wise men of Babylon could not do. Not only did God tell the king what he had dreamed, he even revealed what Nebuchadnezzar had been thinking before he fell asleep. Daniel 2.29 says, As for you, O king, thoughts came to your mind while you while on your bed about what would come to pass after this and he who reveals secrets made known to you what will be in the last days next daniel begins to tell the dream you o king were watching and behold a great image this great image whose splendor was excellent stood before you and its form was awesome the image had was made of fine gold its chest was made of uh, and arms of silver its belly and thighs of bronze its legs of iron its feet partly of iron and partly of clay amazed nebuchadnezzar recognized the details exactly as what he had dreamed there was no doubt that this is the dream that he had seen daniel continued you watched while stone was cut out without hands which struck the image on its feet of iron and clay and broke them in pieces then the iron and clay and the bronze and silver and the gold were crushed together what happened next and became like chaff from the summer threshing floor and the wind carried them away so that no trace of them was found an idol worshipper seeing this image destroyed must have been shocking to nebuchadnezzar but daniel still hard more to tell daniel 2 35 and the stone that struck the image become like became like a great mountain and filled the whole earth Yan. from the beginning to the end the whole dream was exactly as the king now remembered Imagine how amazed Nebuchadnezzar must have been here as he told to be told by his noble young men every detail in the dream just the way he had seen it himself. What was the meaning of the dream? That's the next part of the story. The interpretation. Nebuchadnezzar's dream predicted the rise and fall of key nations of the earth. Looking straight at the king, Daniel said, You are this head of gold. Yes, Babylon was the head. A nation represented by pure gold. A smile of satisfaction must have crossed the king's face as he heard those voice. Babylon was indeed a rich kingdom, and gold was a fitting symbol for its reign. Gold was lavishly used to decorate the buildings around the city. The hanging gardens were one of the seven wonders of ancient world. Had Daniel been a clever politician trying to secure a place for himself in Babylon, he would have stopped the interpretation right there where the king was happy but daniel had a message from god that god wanted revealed not only to the king but also for us today a message that would be very important in the last days in the last days of earth's history so daniel continued after you shall arise another kingdom inferior to yours Archaeologists discovered in the ruins of Babylon a tablet describing the intentions. By the fortification of Isagila and Babylon, I strengthened and established the name of my reign forever. Oh, Nebuchadnezzar trying to reign gold forever. But <clears throat> God had already prophesied nearly 200 years before its fall exactly how the king would be conquered he even gave the name of the king who would conquer babylon cyrus <clears throat> the persian he was named by the prophet isaiah 150 years before he was born isaiah 45 1 says thus saith the lord to his anointed cyrus whose right hand have i held to subdue nations before him and to loose the armor of king to open before him the double doors so that the gates will not be shut. After Nebuchadnezzar, Nabinunidius was king of Babylon of the Babylon Empire. Leaving his son Belshazzar to rule over Babylon, Nab 
na Bonidus was absent for extended period of time. Though Cyrus the Persian had surrounded the city, the Babylonians were not worried. In fact, they were partying as the drunk wine as they drank wine from the golden vessels taken by Nebuchadnezzar from the temple in Jerusalem. They praised the gods of Babylon. They had no idea that the prophecies of Daniel and Isaiah were in the process of being fulfilled. Cyrus could not break down the walls as they were too high and too thick. So he planned another way. He would divert the river that ran through the center of the city and his army would go down the riverbed until they found a way into the city. Someone through carelessness or disloyalty had left the massive inner gates of bronze unguarded and open. Belshazzar was killed and the Babylonian Empire came to an end. Just as prophecy had predicted, the Middle Persian Empire, represented by the chest and arms of silver in Nebuchadnezzar's stream, ruled the Middle East for two centuries. Is everything okay? Okay. Okay, we will continue. I just look at the comments a little bit. The Middle Persian Empire, represented by chest and arms of silver and Nebuchadnezzar's dream, ruled the Middle East for two centuries. But Daniel explained that his kingdom would also be taken over by yet another kingdom. But after you shall arise another kingdom inferior to yours, and then another, a third kingdom of bronze, which shall rule over all the earth. Was the fulfillment, uh, was the prediction fulfilled? It was. It was fulfilled when a brilliant young general, Alexander the Great, defeated Darius III, the third of Persian, in the Battle of Arbel, Arbela in 351 BC, making Greece the third world empire. Much of the armory worn by the Greek infantry was made of brass. The third metal in Nebuchadnezzar's dream. At the age of 25, Alexander became ruler over one of the greatest empires the world has ever known. Writing about Alexander, a Greek historian said, I am persuaded that there was no nation, city, nor people where his name did not reach. There seems to be uh, there seems to have been some divine hand presiding both over his birth and actions, according to the historian. But Alexander died before his 33rd birthday. After his death, his empire was weakened and split into several parts. Until finally on June 22, 168 BC, the Bab Battle of Pydna perished in the Battle of Pydna, perished the empire of Alexander the Great, 144 years after his death. So far, the prophecy has been clearly fulfilled by this train of empires. But there is one more described. And the fourth kingdom shall be as, as, strong, as strong as iron. Iron was an appropriate metal to represent the Roman Empire. Rome would rule with an iron first fist over an even wider territory than the preceding empires. And for centuries longer, during Rome's rule, two events of great importance took place. First, Jesus was born in Bethlehem. It was a Roman tax decree that took his parents to the city of David, where he was born in fulfillment of the Messianic prophecies. Number two, Jesus was crucified in Judea under Roman authority. A Roman governor allowed Jesus to be condemned and Roman soldiers nailed him to the cross. Okay. But there is another more powerful empire at the height of influence. No, 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 no. I didn't read it correctly. 
Yet although this very powerful empire at the height of its influence took part in the crucifixion of Jesus, no power in heaven nor earth could keep him from the grave. That's because Jesus wasn't an ordinary man. He was the creator, the God of the Old Testament, and the one who knew the future and revealed it to Jer uh, Nebuchadnezzar and Daniel in ancient Babylon. Though Rome was so powerful, Jesus wasn't forced onto that cross. He willingly allowed himself to be sacrificed by his own people so that he could save every one of us from our sins. His character of selfless love was the opposite of the character of Satan, the enemy of God. Luke 23.34 says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. While they could kill him, they could not soil his spotless record of living and even dying thinking of others rather than himself. This character of love, this is the character of God. After Rome, the pattern of the prophecy changed. No single world empire would replace the Roman Empire. Daniel explained, whereas you saw the feet and toes, partly of potter's clay and partly of iron, the kingdom will be divided. They, the people, will mingle with the seed of men and will not remain united any more than uh, iron mixes with clay. Because of luxury, political corruption, and moral decay, Rome lost its stability and strength and became become an easy prey for barbaric tribes that began to challenge the empire between AD 300. 51 and AD 476. These invasions divided the entire empire and formed the foundations of the nation located in Europe today. Most historians trace the modern nations of Europe today to seven of these divisions. Alamanni, Germans. Burgundians, Swiss. Franks, from the French. Uh, Franks became French, Lombards became the Italians, Saxons became English, and another three groups, the Heruli, Heruli, <coughs> Ostrogoths, and Vandals, are considered by historians to have been wiped out or merged with other groups so that no distinct nation remains today. Daniel 2.43 says, As you saw iron mixed with ceramic clay, they mingle with the seed of man. But they will not adhere with one another, just as iron does not mix with clay. In other words, royalty would try to intermarry and attempt to these disparate nations to be united in the in the palace of Denmark, one can view the family tree of the royal families in Europe and how they intermarried in hopes of preventing wars and bringing unity. Others down through the ages have tried to recreate another world empire based in Europe. Numerous popes and leaders such as Charlie Ma Ma <coughs> Louis the Ninth, 19th. Napoleon, Hitler, European Union have made valiant attempts to unite what God said would not stick together. But none of these efforts have worked. Europe has remained divided and will never be reunited as one empire. No attempts to put the Roman Empire back together will ever last because God had said it cannot be done. What happened to the many powerful leaders who have tried to unite a divided Europe? They have all failed. Napoleon, sent away the, to the Isle of Elba, had to admit that perhaps God Almighty had been too much for him. Indeed, God's word was stronger than all of them. Those words will not adhere one to another. They will not adhere one to another. Still stay stands true today. If the prophecy could be proven false, it would call into question the authority of the Bible. But those seven words have withstood the determination of some of history's greatest leaders and armies. That means God's 
word never fails. The Bible is true. <clears throat> okay, let's go back to our story. King Nebuchadnezzar must have been astonished by the amazing predictions. Through his dream, God had foretold the rise and fall of great world empires. The last empire would be succeeded by a number of nations. Some strong, some weak, but all hopelessly divided. What would happen next? <clears throat> Daniel now brings Nebuchadnezzar to the climax of the dream. He said, And in the days of these kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. It shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Inasmuch as you saw that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it broke in pieces the iron, the bronze, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great God has made known to the king what will come to pass after this. The dream is certain, and its interpretation is sure. Okay, the next great event in history will be the second coming of Christ and the establishment of his kingdom represented by the stone cut out without hands. His kingdom will be founded not by the hands of men but by the mighty hand of God. His kingdom will be fill the whole earth and last forever. Then will be fulfilled the prophecy in Revelation 11:15. The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and he shall reign forever and ever. Okay. So what did Nebuchadnezzar say? He said, "Truly your God is the God of the is the God of gods and the Lord of kings and a revealer of secrets." That is what Nebuchadnezzar said. He bowed down. So, there is really no other choice, other conclusion. Daniel's God is true because God knows how to, God knows the future. <clears throat> I want uh, God's Daniel to be my God. How about you? Maybe like Nebuchadnezzar, sometimes we worry about the future. If you worry about the future, these Nebuchadnezzar dreams you should consider. The journey is over, almost over in this earth. The dream of Daniel in chapter 2 tells us that we don't need to worry about the future. The suffering and the stress that sin has brought into the world is all going to pass away. God is going to come again and make everything right. And everything about that forever kingdom will be in harmony with his character and unselfish love. The best news is that the same God who will establish the eternal kingdom wants you to be a part of it. He wants to, to say to you, Come, you blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom preferred, prepared for you. Matthew 25, 34. <clears throat> How can you know that you will be there? You can be certain that you will be there if you will. By faith, do what the thief on the cross did as he hung next to Jesus. He knew that he was a sinner and he needed to be saved from those sins that he had committed. He looked over at the Creator God of the world hanging there on the cross. The blood running down Jesus' face from his thorn-pierced brow, and his heart was touched by the amazing love. <clears throat> he cried out, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom, Luke 23, 42. And Jesus gave him that assurance that he would be with him in the kingdom. So, brothers and sisters, friends, we also can receive the same assurance that we will be with Christ in His kingdom that is soon to come. Do you want that assurance? You can comment if you want that assurance. Please comment yes. Do you want a heart filled with hope in place of worry and stress of the world? Okay. 
comment uh, yes again yes yes do you want your life to be in the hands of God who knows and controls the future comment yes 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 okay you can rest securely in God's hands that's what we want this evening he is calling God uh, he is calling us today he is inviting us to come today he is appealing to our hearts right now would you like to join me in saying tonight Lord I will completely trust in you please be my savior from this world of sin please make me by your grace a citizen of your eternal kingdom is that your desire you can do this with me now as we pray Our Father in heaven, we thank you for the nice presentation for the Bible, for the prophecies, for the story, the dream that you have given to Nebuchadnezzar and to Daniel to assure us that your word is trustworthy and true. Help us to trust your word, to love your word, to have hunger and thirst for your word that it may change our lives and tell us more about the future, what we need to do, how we need to be living these days. In this last days, in Jesus' name we pray, Amen. Thank you, friends, if you are still listening. <clears throat> uh, this is not really a formal presentation. I'm just try uh, trying to recall the doctrines for my own self. And if there are any other people in Facebook watching, then you benefit also. The slides are downloaded if you type... Uh, New Beginnings ASI you google that and you will find the slides these are the newest of the slides that are given to everyone the date is September 2020 a very nice slides from ASI NAD good evening everyone bye bye stop streaming <laughs>